same things that we may think shouldn't come out of the mouths of such young believers. God is real. I come to tell you, out of the mouths of babes, God orders our steps. Amen. Give praise to the Lord. The end result will be you won't. 
Sometimes we lock ourselves in and limit our own success and progress by our negative mentalities that hold us prisoner and limit us from reaching and experiencing our fullest potential. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. We can thank God he has brought us from a long way. All too many of us have been told that we would never amount to anything. Amen. We'll never do anything. Why waste all your time and effort? Just get a job and live. But God is our maker. Anybody in here glad about that? God is our maker. Jesus, the Son of God and our Savior, told his disciples, and he tells us through his word that he must return to the Father. And then he goes on to say, Greater things shall we, his disciples, do while we wait for his return. God wants you to know that he has blessings in store for you that you've never experienced before. Anybody believe that in here today? Amen. God will have you to know that when it comes to you, he isn't a stingy God. I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm awfully glad about that. He is God. And he wants to see each of us blessed. Jesus said that he had come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He desires that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Can you believe that this morning? Amen. It's God's desire that you rise to a level of living that you have never experienced before. But you must believe that it's possible for you. Amen, church. Amen. You've got to believe. You've got to believe in your healing. You've got to believe in your deliverance. You've got to believe your financial breakthrough. You've got to believe that God is going to save your children. Have I got a witness in here? You've got to believe that God is going to bring you through your trials and your tribulations. You've got to believe that it's possible. As we consider this text, Scripture tells us that Jesus made a statement and he expressed himself to a man who had reached a point of giving up. This man had arrived at a place in his life where he felt that his case was hopeless. Anybody ever been there? Amen. That man felt helpless. He had experienced a letdown early. And the record tells us that he experienced a powerless display on the part of Jesus' disciples. They had been incapable of making a difference in the life and circumstances of his son. This man now gripped with thoughts of hopelessness and helplessness. And under the weight of feeling that his case was beyond all hope, he comes to Jesus and says, Master, I have brought unto you my son who has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he takes him, he tears him and he foams and gasps with his teeth and pines away. And I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Jesus goes on and speaks to him and shares a word with him, and this word would lead to a revolutionizing situation. 
that plagued he and his son. And that word is the word of faith. God has given us a little bit of faith, church. Amen. Just as this man experienced a trial and a tribulation and a, and a doubt, God is the giver of faith. Somebody in here knows something about some ups and some that. In and out of the hospital. Maybe at times even in ICU room. Having doctors probe and cut off your body. Thank you. 
Then Jesus told him to bring the child to him. Having faith in God is like learning to ride a bicycle. Once you've learned how to keep your balance, it's smooth sailing from then on out. Any bicycle riders in here today? Amen. Push come to shove, that car won't stop. I got a bicycle in the garage. Amen. And I know how to get on it, Steve. I tell you, God is good. Our God is good. Scripture tells us that the prayers of the righteous avails much. And we cannot have this bit of faith and please God if we are coming to Him, expecting Him to do something. And we are wishy and washy in our faith walk. Fearful and doubting. Anybody hear me this morning? Amen. 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 The prayers of the righteous avails much. And what that means is you can't go to God expecting Him to work a miracle in your life. And you've got all of unrepented sin still lurking within your being. Amen. 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 Does God hate sin? Yes. Our God hates sin. Yes. But I'm glad today. I'm glad today that He loves this sin. Amen. I'm glad. Doesn't want you to be. Yeah. 
Sunday morning. But every day that we wake up and we're able to look around us and see the light of day, we've got to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our hearts and to lead and to guide us. The Word of God says the wages of sin is death. Spiritual death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Those who willfully serve sin, they're a servant of Satan. I didn't make it up. Look in your Bibles and you'll see for yourself. You cannot serve two masters. The Word of God says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from him and forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh, I come to tell you, America's in a bad shape right now. Amen. 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 And there are some folk waiting for the opportunity to cause our land to become rough, just like so many other places. They want to come in here and tear up and tear down and take innocent minds and believe that they're doing the Lord's will. But I come to tell you, church, we've got to get back to some basics. Amen. 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 We've got to get back to some basics. We just thank God for the men that showed up at the Bible study on yesterday. And we talked about the need of prayer in our lives. Men, we've got to get back to some basics. Is possible. Right. 
Yes, it's possible to leave a pit. It's possible to be rescued from a dungeon. David will tell you it's possible to stand before a giant and come out victorious. You can say to that giant, just like David said to Goliath, you got to tell your mountain to get out of your way. you got to tell your giant that you know that you've got a God who is able to deliver. Amen. Joseph had God on his side Amen. who was able to deliver him from a horrible pit. Jeremiah will tell you that it's possible to be delivered from a horrible dungeon. Amen. Those three Hebrew boys can tell you that it's possible to walk out of a fiery furnace without having a hair singed or the smell of fire or smoke in your garments. I come to tell you it's possible. The woman with the issue of blood will tell you if you just have faith, you can touch the hem of Jesus' God and you can be made whole. Daniel will tell you that it's possible to spend all night in the den of hungry lives and emerge when the morning comes without a scratch on your body. Paul and Silas will tell you that it's possible to walk away from something that has bound you in shackles, put on you by the devil. Oh, my brothers and sisters, we must have here know that deliverance is possible, regardless to what your situation may look like. Amen, Joe. You know, once you've had your own personal experiences, and your own personal encounters with the delivering power of God, then you can step out and say, yes, yes, I know. I know because God has shown me. My God has delivered me. God wants you to leave this mountain believing today. If you believe, yes. if you believe, believe it, yes. that your rescue is possible. Yes. If you believe in your lead, that your deliverance is possible. Yes. If you lead, believe it, that a breakthrough is possible. Right. You are going to discover that you will come to experience some awesome possibilities. Right. Amen, church. Amen. Believing moves you out of the realm of the practical. Believing moves you into a realm of the supernatural. God wants to move us beyond the zone of the natural into the zone of the supernatural. Trust in God takes you to the supernatural. When you walk believing that nothing is impossible for God. You can look at distressing and depressing facts of life and you can say just like those three Hebrew boys said to Nebuchadnezzar, I know that you've got a fiery furnace and we know that you have heated it seven times hotter than usual. But we want to leave you with this word and we won't say another thing to you. Our God. Did somebody hear that? Sometimes God takes us up on a mountaintop 
in our worship experiences. And we are blessed to feel His presence and know that He's real. But the inevitable comes. And that is, we must go back to the valley where life goes on. Jesus had been up on the mountain top, the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And they saw Jesus talking with Moses and with Elijah. And Peter being caught up in that heavenly experience said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Peter wanted to build a tabernacle for them so that they could stay on that night. But the reality is, we all must return to the valley. Amen, church. We must return to the places where there are distresses on every hand. We must return to the places where there are trials and tribulations going on in life. In our text, Jesus had come down from the mountain and discovered that there were problems brewing in the valley. Problems revolved around his father, a man who was a father, and his son. The son had a lot of problems. Theologians likened it to epilepsy. This child was having epileptic seizures. Others say even Jesus said and attested to the boy was the demon possessed. Scripture tells us that whenever this boy would find himself around fire, blazing fire, flaming fire, the demon in him would rage with such fury. It would throw the child into the fire. And the father would come running to rescue his son from the fire. In efforts to rescue his son, the father himself got burned. Have there been times when you tried helping a loved one? And in a way of speaking, you got burned. Somebody knows what I'm talking about this morning. Maybe you co-signed the process of trying to help, and you got burned. You were left with the responsibility of paying the debt off. Well, that's all that's required of you. And Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And you are received into heaven. I come to tell you, you got all cheap. Have I got a witness here? Amen. 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 We don't like to be caught with the responsibilities of others. But I come to tell you, Jesus paid a debt that he didn't know. He paid a debt that you and I are responsible for. He gave his life fully for you and me. He took the whip. He took the scorn. They dragged him to Calvary's hill. Yes, yes. Had him carry his cross and then they nailed him yes. to that old rugged cross. Yes, yes. In case somebody don't know it, there was a debt that was paid yes. by Jesus for you. Yes. Have I got a witness in here? Yes.
so that you and I could have the awesome possibility of being healed. For well, by his stripes, the Bible says that we are healed. Is there anybody in here and you claim the healing that Jesus made possible for you? Is there anybody in here and you know that you know you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Is there anybody in this room and you know that your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. Yes. Jesus knew that his time and work on earth had come to an end. Yes. So he allowed sinful men to take him to Calvary's tree. They nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. Yes. Jesus died so that you and I might live. He died, church. Didn't he die? Yes. Jesus and died a fleshly, physical death so that you and I can live and walk in the Spirit while we are still on earth and live eternally with Him in heaven. Our God, He's alright. I don't care what anyone says. I've made up in my mind. I'm going to trust Him with my life because and over again that he can do anything. There are awesome possibilities for those who trust in God. God has a breakthrough with your name written on. Jesus lets us know in his word that we can do greater things in his name because he was going to be with his father. God has given all of us a mouth, and some know how to use it. Amen, church. You must take courage and talk to your mountain. Your mountain may be an illness that you just can't seem to match. Your mountain may be some kind of stronghold that you seem you can't break free of. Your mountain may be depression and distresses that won't leave you alone. Your mountain may be your marriage and the mountain grows bigger by the day. Your mountain may be struggling with wayward, rebellious children. Your mountain may be having to deal with hellacious supervisors and managers on the job. But God want you to open your mouth and tell that mountain to get out of your way in the name of Jesus and believe with all of your heart, not part of your heart, but all of your heart, that the power of Jesus is working in your faith. Can you receive that today? has 
the ability to make a difference. Stand to your feet. The doors of the church are open. The invitation is extended. There may be somebody here and the Lord is speaking to your heart. He's saying, come. Come just as you are. We can't get ourselves ready. But when we delay being obedient to the Lord's call, we give the enemy an opportunity to have his way in our lives in a greater extent. If you are here, if you are here, you don't want to leave this earth and not have things right with Jesus. If you are here and the Lord is saying, come, come. There are no perfect churches. Sometimes people run here and there looking and searching. But those who are in any church, they know where help can be provided. For we serve a God and His name is Jehovah. Child. He will. Did y'all hear what I said? He will. God will. He'll provide. Whatever it is that we stand in need of, God can supply that need. So if you are here and you're looking for a church home, you've already confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, but you're detached from the body of Christ. In that you may be going here and there and not really connecting and knowing what the purpose of God is for your life. But we find out what that purpose is when we are tightly and united, joined in the body of Christ. Amen, church? Amen. 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 There are no loose fingers roaming around somewhere doing the will of God. But I've got all five, all ten of my things. And they're all joined together in unity in this body that God has made. And so I want to say to somebody, you believe that you can make it right on up in the heaven being disobedient to the call of God on your life. Well, I come to tell you that's deception from the evil one.